Sean Franklin and Nicole Smith from Blood and Iron Martial Arts here today to talk to you about how to grip a sword. The simplest grip you can take is a hammer. This is the strongest grip you can take, but it's not the best. You lose a lot in distance and fluidity. A more advantageous way to strike is to shift the position of the sword in the hand so that the point is more forward. In order to achieve the same distance with the hammer grip, I'd have to hyperextend my wrist, which is a really bad idea that I think someone already made a video about. This grip position is known as the handshake grip, and it's closely modeled after the handshake. Unfortunately, the term handshake grip has also been applied to a number of very weak wrist positions that really have no structure behind them. Another variant on the handshake grip is to have your thumb on the back of the hilt. This is really good for quick snap attacks in a sport of context. Unfortunately, from a martial arts point of view, it loses out on a lot of power. You have to decide what you're trying to accomplish. Do you want a sport of touch that's very quick, or do you want to land a fight ending attack? When not actively engaged in a cut, you'd like your hands to remain loose and mobile. For instance, if I take my ox guard, I can leave my hand open and still maintain structure. By having the hand relaxed, we allow smooth guard transitions. We only need to regrip the sword firmly when we engage the power of the body to deliver a cut. If you're death gripping the sword the entire time, your movements become very blocky and very slow. Many false edge techniques require you to rotate the sword in your hand and with the thumb coming to rest on the blade. In order to help with edge alignment, we can use the thumb as a pivot point to help get a little bit more leverage as we rotate the sword. Rotating the sword in your hand, switching grips, transmitting power from the core to the sword, targeting your opponent's openings. Yeah, piece of cake, right? Remember when gripping your rapier not to choke up too far to the cross guard. This will inhibit your disengage, which is a core concept in rapier fighting. When adopting extremely point-forward postures, the grip is really important. If we don't hold the sword correctly in the hand, we have no choice but to break the wrist. There's no one grip position that you can just adopt and stay there. Your hands have to be relaxed, mobile, and able to adapt whatever position the situation demands. There are many subtleties and variations that we have not been able to show you today, though there are also many wrong positions. We hope you found this helpful. And remember, if you're not going to put in the practice, you're not going to get the results. And give me the tongue like Come on, ready? You're going. Run? I know it's on video still. No, it's still, it's still rolling. I can shoot a picture oh, okay. at the same time. Okay. Oh, we didn't know that. I'm just gonna put the Do it again. Do it again. All right, so three, two, one. Happy? Yeah. <laughs>